All right, so in previous videos of this series, I have already shown you how to assign different things to the buttons in your pen, how to create radio menus, and that sort of thing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a slightly more advanced way of creating a radio menu that has multiple shortcuts within the same uh, eight options or eight buttons that a radio menu for the Wacom devices give you. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. Again, this is something that I use all the time, uh, but you can do the same thing for any software that you want. So I'm gonna show you the one that I've been showing you in other uh, videos. Um, this is my more advanced radial menu. And all it means is that from a single kind of like uh, general tools radial menu, you can actually access two different radial menus. So I can click on this one and that brings in my masking. I'm going to pin it there and I can click on my ZBrush subtools and I'm going to pin that one in here so that I have access to anything that has to do with masking. So again, just want to do a quick demonstration of what I would use this one uh, during this stage that I'm blocking out this creature and just figuring out what this uh, weird looking guy is going to look like. So I'm just going to do a quick masking in here. I'm going to click on auto. That's going to fill it in. I'm going to grow it, um, maybe dilute it a little bit like so. Let's blur it as well. Let's invert that. And then now I can just go to something like deformation and I can just go ahead and inflate this like so and clear that mask and then I can just go ahead and smooth it. So, you know, this type of things is, is, a, is an interesting way to come up with ideas on, on figuring out how this is going to look. Now, if I want to, let's say, add some eyes or something in this area, I can use the tools that I have here in my subtool list. So I can click on append. That's going to bring in actually this one. I don't like to have it pinned so that I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it in like so. And I'm going to click on append. And that way I can choose, let's say, uh, a sphere. Right, so now I have the sphere and let's go ahead and bring that sphere to the side. All right, something like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and mirror and weld that. All right, so let's say that these are the eyes for the character, but it's not looking quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this again, append uh, something like a ring 3D. Uh, whoops, let's select the ring 3D and let's go ahead and place this uh, some kind of, I don't know, like an eyelid or something. We can play around with this later on. Right, and let's go ahead and mirror and weld. Cool, so now I have the eyelid, uh, but the eyelid is a separate mesh, right? And I wanna merge it with the rest, with this one right here. So what I can do is I wanna check my subtools first. I wanna make sure that this one is at the top um, and I can take this one now at the top. So now I have these rings that I created here and I wanna merge them with the one below. So again, if I bring in my subtools, I can click on either merge visible or I can merge down. So if merge down, it's just gonna take this one and bring it down. Click on Merge Down. Uh, I'm going to get this extra pop-up. I'm going to click on Always OK. That's it. So now you see this is part of the same. So now I have this section right here that I can just go ahead and clean up a little bit. Let's go ahead and Dynamesh this so that it blends it together. And then I can just go ahead and smooth it. And you see now it is part of the same. So that's the reason why I have these different uh, tools available to me. Because when I'm blocking out a new idea, I constantly use things like masking and also uh, this type of like subtools, right? So it depends on your workflow. I'm not saying that this is necessarily what you need to go for. But I just want to show you that from a single uh, button like here, or like a single radial me menu like this, you can access two or eight or many. And once you access one, you can actually keep going on top of that. So for example, this one right here access the masking and this one right here access the sub tool um, tools, right? Now, what you can do is, let's say you can assign something to this one instead to go to a new radial menu, right? That is gonna give you even more options. And if you want, you can assign something to this uh, let's say to this area of the radio menu to another radio menu. So you can just go down the rabbit hole and create as many one as you want. I would advise to just do one level, just like I have here. So from one, you have two, because when you have more than that, it becomes a little bit more distracting and it doesn't, I don't believe it enhances the, the workflow or the speeds up the workflow. So just like, um, you know, you can have eight of these ones that uh, when you select them, they appear here, but more than that is a little bit too much. But I just want to mention this in case you have like a hundred shortcuts, you can totally do it with just this. All right. So let's go ahead and build this one. So I'm going to collapse all of this and I'll show you how it's done. So now let's go to the Wacom Center and I'm gonna be a little bit faster now that I showed you already how to create a custom radio menus. I'm gonna click on on-screen shortcuts and I'm gonna open up the radio menus and this is the one that we created in previous videos uh, but to create a more advanced one, I have the ZBrush tools and these ZBrush tools access different radial menus. And I have the ZBrush subtools and the masking that I show you. So let's go ahead and create one really quickly. I'm going to click on new radial menu and I'm going to assign it as main tools, right? So this is the one that is going to be a shortcut to other radial menus. So let's click apply. That's it. Let's click on Wacom, apply to all 
I'm going to make sure that this appears wherever my cursor is. Uh, text is fine. Maybe make it a bit larger than that. And let's go ahead and disable this one. I'm going to set it to disable this one as well. So I want to create kind of like a cross. Um, you'll see that in a second. So basically this one, this one, this one, and these ones are the ones that I can assign all the radio menus. So let's go ahead and create one more so that we can assign something new. And then I'm going to show you uh, just with the ones that I have already created so that we don't spend too much time on that. So click on new radio menu and we're going to call this one. Um, let's try selection tools. Okay, selection tools, click apply. And again, these selection tools, what I like to do is assign a color code so I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to assign white apply to all. So I know that anything that relates to selection is going to be with this white color coded. So let's say um, I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to go to keyboard, uh, keyboard shortcut. And let's say if we use this in Photoshop, it will be uh, the letter M. So M goes for selection or select rectangular like so apply and it is going to be there. Now, like I said, I'm not going to fill the entire radio menu. Uh, this is something that I've already shown you how to do. So it is more about creating the connection between them. So this is my selection uh, menu. Now, just for the sake of demo again, let's go ahead and create one more. And this one is going to be, uh, let's go for masking tools and let's click on apply. So the masking for me, I don't know, maybe because I have that sort of like color reference in ZBrush. Let me just show you that when you press the masking tools, it sort of like gives you this yellow cursor. Anything that is yellow to me, it feels like masking. So I can do the same thing here. Again, might be different for you. So yellow, all keys, again, display at cursor. So these are going to be all the tools and I can just go ahead and assign anything that I want. Um, again, I'm not going to do that, but I just want to create these selection tools and masking tools. So let's go ahead and click back on the main tool. So this is the main one. So what I want to do is I want to assign the different uh, radio menus or other radio menus that I might have here. So let's say for Photoshop tools, which is something that I have in my UI, I can click on this one. And in this one, I'm going to go to radio menu and I'm going to select my Photoshop tools. So now I had Photoshop tools and because the Photoshop icon is kind of blue, I'm going to go ahead and assign a blue color. Now on this one right here, I'm going to go to um, to radio menu and I'm going to select my selection tools. Remember the selection tools, I went for a white color. So let's add that like so. And in this one, I'm going to go for the other one that we created. So radio menu, uh, masking tools, the masking are going to be yellow. And just for fun, let's go ahead and select another radio menu that I already have. So radio menu. Um, let's go for tools and let's say tools are going to be green. Okay. So now we have this, this is what I meant at the beginning. We have this sort of like X and the other ones are going to be disabled. Okay. Now, one thing that I personally like to do is that if this is your kind of like main uh, radial menu, right? And you have all these colors. I like to leave some of them disabled so that I can select a different color. So for example, I can maybe let's make it red so that it's very obvious, but you know, it could be distracting. So now this red color is kind of like a reference to go back to this selection mode. Okay, so that means that I can go to the selection tools and I can assign one of these ones to be the, the way to go back to the original. So let's go ahead and go to radio menu and let's select the main tools. Uh, here we go. And let's go ahead and assign a red color, right? So actually let's go ahead and go back a bit because I just remember something else I wanted to show you that kind of like makes most sense. Um, so let's just assign something like redo or something like that. All right. <laughs> so I forgot to mention this. So in the main tools, you see, I have these locations, right? So if I click on this one, visually this side right here, the top left corner is going to bring in the selection panel. So visually again, for me, I want to have the same sort of like uh, corner to go back into it. So that means that the selection tools, I actually want to put it in here, right? So let's put it back as the radio menu. Let's go to selection, uh, sorry, to the main tools and let's do the same thing with masking. So masking is on the right hand side. Let's go to masking and I'm going to put it here and this is going to be red. Oh, sorry, red. And this is going to be my masking tools, radio menu, masking tools. All right. So I'm not going to assign the rest because I think you get the idea. So all I need to do now, I have all of these radio menus, but the only one that I'm interested in assigning to a button would be the main tools. So let's go to devices. I'm going to use the Pro Pen 2. This, this is the one that I'm using as a test. And I'm going to go ahead and change this from tools to main tools. Okay, so now this main tools is the radio menu that we just created. So let's go into ZBrush. And now I can go ahead and bring that in. And you see we have this radial menu that has the four sections. So I can bring in, let's say, the masking tools. And you see, let's go ahead and pin this one in there. 
and this one as well. So you see what I'm what I mean in a second. And then I can bring in the selection tools. We can we can also pin that in. And you see how it just sort of like popped on this side. And that is because if we go back to the Wacom Center and click on the on-screen shortcuts, uh, we need to select the selection tools. And we need to make sure that display at cursor is on as well. There we go. All right. So now if I collapse this one, when I click on this, it's going to appear right there. Perfect. So this is basically what I was trying to, to suggest. I mean, it doesn't have to be like that. It's just something that I think works for me so that I know that if I click on selection tools, it will bring all my selections. If I click on masking tool, it will bring all of them. And then I know that I can click on these icons to go back in there. And that is only if I don't want to have this pinned anywhere. So I can collapse them. So let me just show you in a practical example of how it would work. So if I'm working on this, I bring in my tools and go masking. And I know that these are the masking tools, but I can go ahead and come back to the main one as well. All right, so that's basically how you can create a custom radial menu that is a bit more advanced. And when I say advanced, it just means that it has access to more shortcuts, more than the eight that the, the default one gives you, but you can create multiple ones. Now, to wrap up this tip, I just want to show you something else in case you don't like those radial menus. Let's go ahead and go back into the Wacom Center. So if you don't like the radial menus, you can do exactly the same thing and map them in exactly the same way if you go to the grid panels. I have some of these, but some of them come with the different software I have. So let's go ahead and create one really quickly. I'm going to click on new, new grid panel, and then you can choose the layout. So I quite like this uh, single row of eight or the single column. You can go for either or, or anything that you want really, but I'm going to select the single row at the top and I'm going to call it custom tools and click apply. And there we go. So we now have these buttons and it works exactly the same. So I can just select this one and assign whatever you want, you know, exactly in the same way that we set up the, the radio menus. Let's actually give it a red color just so you can see. And maybe this one could be a keyboard shortcut, control M and let's assign a, I don't know, something, <laughs> right? Um, this is a bit random and let's go ahead and click on icons and text. Okay. So these two are disabled. This actually, these six are disabled. Let's actually give it uh, something else. I'm going to go for default actions, undo, keyboard shortcut, control. I mean, this is very random. Display toggle. And uh, let's do keyboard shortcut, control E. And this one, one more. Let's go for change settings. And this one, radio menu, main tools. Okay. So again, you can do exactly the same thing, but in this format. Um, and the way that you assign it is exactly in the same way. So if I go back to devices, I can assign my grid panels now. I'm going to go to custom tools. And this time, I don't want the custom tools. Let's go back into custom tools. And these are the ones right here. I don't want these ones to appear with the cursor is. And that's the, the main difference between this and a radio menu. So if I go back into ZBrush and I press my radio menu, they appear here at the top. So I like to just set it up. Um, you know, if I'm using ZBrush, this is how I would use it. I can go ahead and pin it here so I can start working on this. And at some point, if I do this and I can undo, you know, this is not working, undo that and so on and so forth, right? So it, it really becomes a, a matter of like preference whether you wanna use this type of uh, grid or a, a radio menu, but you can assign multiple grids in, in the same way. Um, one thing that would be quite interesting to do would be to have the, the row like so, and then you have maybe eight different columns. So when you click on this one, it would bring a column, um, you know, as an extra set of menu. But that's it for this tip. Hopefully you find it useful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.